Welcome everybody back to another episode of Foul Mouth Fishing. Uh, today, uh, I have a big bag of stuff. Uh, in my in a previous episode, you know, I went down to my old alma mater, alma mater, I speak English, <laughs> that uh, was where I went to uh, school, uh, both elementary and, uh, or middle school and high school. And uh, while I was down there, I went to the local Dick's uh, Sporting Goods that was down there buy it, so I figured why not stop in, <clears throat> and I picked up some stuff. So, uh, I got me a nice 3700 series Plano, uh, from that trip to the school, um, I showed you all in the last episode that, that I got some, some very nice custom, uh, baits, so I needed a, a little bit of a larger box to add those new baits to, so, uh, a little bit better than the, the, the 360 Planos, 370 Planos, so this is a 3700, so I figured I'd, I'd grab one. So I picked that up. <clears throat> so the rest of the goodies in the bag. Um, I also stopped in, and, and I'm a bargain, shop, uh, bargain shopper. So uh, I saw a Smash Tail Minnow. This was on their clearance sale. It's a nice little uh, nice paint scheme on this one. It's basically the, the Savage Gear version of the Whopper Plopper. It's a 135 series size, so it's a little bit larger size than, than uh, the Whopper Plopper in the same category. Um, so I figured I saw that I didn't have one in that blue blue tone. I have crawfish color. I have uh, you know chartreuse color, brown color, black and white. I didn't quite have this uh, this blue tone, so I figured I'd I'd scoop that up while I was there. <clears throat> I got quite a few through here uh, of the Gary Yamamoto. Uh, high RPM spinner baits. Now these are double willow blades. Oh no, okay. This one is a double willow and this one has a small Colorado and a willow blade. So I got them in my two go-to colors, a black for stained water, white for, for clean water. Um, but obviously Gary Yamamoto is a, is a name brand and they were also in the clearance section. So uh, this one's got that little tiny Colorado and the willow. Now, I typically like to throw spinners with a Colorado willow combo rather than straight Colorado or straight willow. And the reason for that is willow leaf blades primarily give a, a simulation of a secondary fish swimming alongside of, you know, your, your jig head. Um, the thing about the Colorado blades is they add a thump. They're, they're, they're a vibrating, creating um, blade. <clears throat> so I like to fish typically um, spinner baits that have the Colorado willow blade. This way I get the benefit of having flash through the water from the willow blade spinning, creating the, the simulation of a secondary fish flying, you know, swimming through the, through the water. But I get that, that vibration and that thump in the water that, that, uh, and the water displacement that the Colorado blade gives off. So typically if, you find, if I find a, um, a spinner bait with double willow, I will take one of the willows off and I'll substitute a Colorado blade in, in its uh, in its place, so those were four ninety seven on sale also in the um, in the reductions. While I was there, um, I got some Cinco's. So, so I saw some oddball colors, but they're colors that might actually hold up. I've got a uh, a big bite Bates, and they just use a stick assortment. Uh, these were also in for a dollar ninety nine each. Um, this is a five inch Cinco. This is in their uh, DSG AST color. Uh, so it's like a, a, a muted green, um, pale out green. And then I got a Gary Yamamoto 4 inch. Um, this one's in a watermelon, watermelon red flake. So Gary Yamamoto, obviously, sank those from him are bar, bar none. I got a Big Bite Baits also in, in a um, green pumpkin red. Uh, this one is a finesse worm with a curly tail so I got this now this was only a uh, four pack as opposed to the other ones which were full packages and you can smell the anisette on uh, or anise on that one <clears throat> I got while I was there there's another Gary Yamamoto this one is gooseberry gooseberry jam now I just saw this color and it, it interests me it's it's a uh, it's a two-tone. You've got a purple on half and a dark, dark, rich green 
on the other side. So you've got the purple on this on this one side, and then the dark green on the back half, giving you this uh, this nice uh, thing. This is a, a four inch, so I can use this on an eco rig or a Ned rig. Um, I think that'll work out well. So I'll keep that. Um, I also picked up. Oh, uh, here's another Gary Yamamoto spin bait. I got this one. There's another one, four ninety seven again on on sale. Um, this one caught my eye because it's it's definitely got the frog colors. So if you're in open water and you know, I always go out. I throw my top water first. I'll throw my my spinning uh, or my uh, my frogs or or uh, top water baits like the whopper ploppers, <clears throat> things like that. See if I can't get a top water bite. If they're not not really uh, being very enticed by that, then I'll switch over to subsurface stuff. But uh, that just caught my eye with this great, great blade setup. Again, this is a willow and a little tiny Colorado. Um, but that color scheme just caught my eye. That really does emulate a, uh, a frog. And I can run a really nice um, complimentary trailer on that. I think that'll definitely catch some fish when the weather turns, uh, you know, end of spring, beginning of summer. <clears throat> Got next. Decided to pick up a Lunker Hunt prop fish in black. Um, I throw these occasionally. I don't throw them as much as I do an actual frog. Um, but uh, again, if you don't have too much uh, top water cover, um, you know, weeds and and uh, lily pads and stuff like that, these prop fish work out well. If you have a lot of surface grass, surface uh, lily pads, then I don't, I don't waste my time with these props. I would do a, um, you know, a regular flipping frog, pad crash or something like that. <clears throat> but for open water along the banks where you have grass that grows off the bank in and over the water as cover, you can throw these under, they sit on top, the prop will run, and you can just follow that, you know, just run your, your re retrieve alongside of that cover, alongside of that bank edge, and it'll, it'll draw the fish up, and, and especially out of the shade when the summer heat's on, that's your place to go. So I like to throw these, and I got black because I didn't have anything really dark, dark color. I had a frog tone, and I had a sunfish tone, but I didn't have anything really dark, um, so I figured black might help me out. Um, I got me a Kitek. In a uh, what color is this? Silver fish, silver flash minnow, four inch, Kitex, um, always great for trailers. I thought this might pair well with because it's got a silver clear white, and then it's got a green with a blue and and gold and black speckle, and I thought that would pair up really nicely as a trailer on this spinner bait, as a complementary color. Um, it emulates that green top with the green back and then the white flash with the white so I figured yeah hey, saw this rabbit was also in the sale uh, section so I figure what the heck and this is again it's a full pack um, so let's put them in here and Kitek name brand always a good buy <clears throat> uh, definitely a brand to get uh, longevity and value for your money is the Z-Man, Z-Man, Laztec. Um, I got some good baits for Ned ringing and uh, even a, a Carolina rig. I got these uh, TRD claws, little craw baits. Uh, and this is that powder blue on the back and a green pumpkin on top. Uh, they call it the Deal. That's their color, and nothing help matches. A Laztec material. So this claw can get caught up in something, you're not going to lose the claw. The longevity on these is, is amazing, so it's worth the buy because you're not going to end up <clears throat> tossing these baits out every cast and having to replace it and just, you know, you're not throwing money into the wind, so to speak. And while I was there, I also picked up the Turbo Craw Z. It's another little green pumpkin, a little bit of golden black flake in it. Um, but yeah, these these do these have a great action. I've used them in the back. This is a six pack. These are four inch ones. Um, 
those little appendages on the side actually do stimulate fish fish strikes as well. So I figured that. And <clears throat> I also, as I spoke before in a previous uh, previous episode, I said, look, I need to get back out there and go with throwing more tubes. Uh, I have tubes. I do have. I'm going to make up a proper dedicated tube box rather than just having them in with some other random baits. Um, but I figured, you know what, while I'm there, I'm going to look at tubes. And I saw a couple of tubes that caught my eye. Certainly, watermelon red, always a go-to color. Anything green pumpkin, watermelon, red. These are salty super tube. These are 3.75 inch, so 3 and 3 quarter inch. Um, super salty tubes. Again, your salt content adds, changes your buoyancy characteristics and definitely adds to the... Uh, to the bait's performance. I couldn't resist those. Hopefully neither will the bass. I got a, from the same Zoom, I also got a Salty Super Tube. Uh, this is their White Pearl. I thought this might work out well as well. When the water, when the water is good. And that might definitely hook me up with some, some good sized bass. <coughs> And switching companies, this is uh, Gets It. And this color I had not seen for a long time. I'm probably just, you know, haven't been very observant. But this definitely looks like it's a potential winner. This is um, a translucent, clear kind of color. And then it's got this blue fleck with silver and gold in it and black. So you got silver, gold, black, and blue flag. Uh, they call this color... do they call the color? Mm -hmm. For all good game fish, blah blah blah, it doesn't have a... oh, bluegill. Oh, well, it makes sense. So this is their bluegill color scheme. Um, I'd have had a little more green in there if I was going for a bluegill color scheme, but that's just me. <clears throat> but yeah, that caught my eye. Um, so that's the gets it. So I threw, threw that in the bag. And... Last but not least, I got me a mm, Whopper Plopper for nine nine ninety seven, nine ninety seven. Uh, it's a nine size ninety frog color. Um, I have Whopper Ploppers in black and blue and uh, white, but I didn't have the frog actual frog color scheme. So again, I thought, what the hell? While well, it's there and it's on sale, I'm not paying full price, so I might as well pick one up. So this is there. Is there in Whopper Plopper 90? Everybody's seen them. Nothing new. But uh, I figured, you know, I'd throw this quick video in and uh, just give you something. Oh, one more thing um, before I forget. I set it aside. So the person that got me into fishing back when I was knee-high to a grasshopper um, was Roland Martin, uh, son Scott Martin, and because my first name's Scott too. <laughs> kind of, kind of uh, coerced me into uh, into fishing. Um, so. While I was there, they had on their reduction site, they had this Roland Martin, uh, as seen on TV. This is his uh, Mega Strike uh, fish scent. So, you know, scientifically advanced formula, fish attractant. Okay, sure, whatever. Um, marketing aside, eh, the fact that it was Roland Martin kind of got me. But every, every good angler, you should have some sort of little fish attractant, whatever your particular brand is. Uh, me, I don't hold... Uh, to account one specific brand over brand over another, I just like to have something in my tackle box. If uh, if they're biting or they're just a little bit lethargic, I'll, I'll squeeze something. I'll spray on something. I do use the the dippets, the the garlic scent um, chartreuse for dipping uh, certain baits, especially like things like these tubes, these white tubes. I'll dip the tentacles in the chartreuse, or uh, uh, certainly that that. Uh, I might dip like a third of that in the chartreuse, leaving the bottom third or bottom two-thirds of the tentacles. I'll leave them clear, but put a little tiny flash on the tips so that they're, they're more apt to, uh, to see that moving around in the water. But um, yeah, so a little fish attractant. And the other thing, tube fishing, uh, squirting this down inside the tube when, when you rig it. And uh, I'll get to a video showing how to rig tubes in a not-so-common way. Uh, that allows you to use things like both liquid and this this gel paste uh, fish attractant that'll actually add longevity to the fish attractant so it's not just washing off really fast. I mean, 
a lot of us throw baits, spray, throw bait, spray. Every time you retrieve it, two or three retrieves, and then you're spraying it with more attractant. Um, tubes, there's ways to definitely make your attractant last inside the tube and continue working for a longer span of your fishing trip. And that, again, lends to saving money in the long run. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse my, uh, my voice, I was a little bit hoarse today, but uh, I hope that uh, this was a little entertaining. So I showed you I got a, a few things. Um, I'm waiting on a package from a, uh, I teased, from a certain warehouse of tackle, um, which is going to be exciting, especially uh, for people out there who like uh, musky or pike fishing. Uh, I got myself uh, some new gear. Um, I figured it was worth the expense, and uh, we'll see how that runs a little later on in the season. But uh, I hope this was entertaining. Do me a favor. If you enjoyed this, throw down the thumbs up down, down there in the, in the, in the bottom. Uh, show me that you care. And uh, share. So share this video. Share my, my, uh, my YouTube channel with as many of your angler friends, uh, youth anglers. Uh, I'm going to come up with more content, with more explanations on how to rig things, how to work things uh, specific ways. Um, more of the physiology and psychology of fish over the psychology of fishermen. Uh, for example, how to really pick out things like your fishing line. Everybody buys fishing line and they go buy, um, oh, premium or extra heavy or uh, you know, long cast and this weight, you know, 55 pound test, 15 pound test, 20 pound test. Well, you shouldn't really be coerced through the marketing of these, of these different brands of fishing line by what their pound test weight is. There's ways to look at buying line that will save you a lot of money and give you better results. You'll have a line that'll, that'll be stronger than you may have thought and at a less expense, that'll actually work better for you. It'll cast longer, it will retrieve faster and more smoothly, cause less backlashes in your, uh, in your uh, spinning gear, or, or less curling in your spinning gear, less backlashes in your casting gear. Um, so I'll, I'll do a little short video later on about how to purchase or what to look for when you're purchasing a fishing line, as opposed to getting caught up in the... Um, in the, public, in the publication of, you know, ultra hard duty and, and Invisitech and this and that and all these little catch words that people fall into the trap of thinking that, oh, okay, if it says it's premium and it says it's super durable, then that's the one I have to go to. When in reality, you can get something that doesn't have that necessarily marked on it that will outperform Mr. Super Durable. Um, so look forward to that. Stay in touch. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, ring the bell if, if my commentaries interest you, if my insight can help you uh, hone in on your already exemplary fishing skills or lend and add more to your, to your uh, fishing knowledge. So uh, I appreciate you stopping in and hanging out with me. Uh, I appreciate all the uh, 160 plus so far uh, foul mouth fishing family members. Um, I will be doing that big giveaway at 1,000 subscribers, uh, and hopefully somebody will enjoy what I have to give. I have a, uh, a few custom things coming um, that I will be giving away as well. So uh, we'll see what happens, but uh, I hope to grow, and it's going to take your support to do so. So uh, I appreciate it from me to you. Thank you very much. Stay tuned, and have tight lines.